If you're ready to walk in authority, help finding your purpose and destiny, empowering you to live today. And life. Our lives will be made the better, not the worse, and we would enter into his presence, both now and in the life to come. But what we do not really realize and understand in the fullness of things, and that is our mind requires continual attention. Our minds, your mind, my mind, requires continual attention. Uh, when I was in uh, seminary years ago, uh, I won't say how many years ago, but many years ago, uh, I remember having to do a thesis on, on, on belief. And I actually wrote my uh, dissertation on the belief of a believer. And uh, in doing that, I had to do some research. And I rem remember a particular statistic that I came up with uh, after having gone through and studied the Gospels. Jesus spoke 123 times to every one time on how to live versus being saved. For every one time he talked about being saved, he taught 123 times on how to live. And in that teaching, he addressed the mental apparatus, not the spirit man. And that's because he knew that once we would be saved, our spirit man is totally complete, totally renewed. As a matter of fact, scripture teaches that your spirit man, your born again spirit man cannot sin. So we sin with the same mind that we serve God with because it is the intellect, it's the, it's the mental apparatus. So we're going to take a moment and we're going to review, review as a student's glue. We're going to review and then I'm going to introduce, as I said last, year, last week, on how to renew this thing, how to actually cause my mind to change. And you know, this is a very, very uh, uh, powerful uh, desire by man. The Word of God says... <clears throat> Blessed is the man who ruleth his own soul well. And that word soul means mind. So one of the greatest blessings I can ever experience in my life is when I come to a place in my life that I can tell me what to do. Isn't that an amazing thing? Huh? Not tell somebody else what to do, but tell me what to do. And watch this. Here's the phenomenal, and I listen. <laughs> you know, we tell ourselves stuff all the time, but how often do we listen? Amen. Look at your name and say, you're going to listen to you today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Turn with me in your Bible, if you would, please, to Proverbs. We want to take a look at Proverbs, and I want to go to Proverbs chapter 23, and we're going to uh, take a close look at verse 7. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. Amen. Praise God. And it reads, and this is our uh, home text. It reads, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Constant correct thinking is not a matter of chance. It is a matter of conditioning. Therefore, you must guide yourself purposely in developing the skills to chart the course for true, that is, good success for your life. And so I must understand that when it comes to my life, as I thinketh in my heart, the Word of God says, so am I. And we uh, have learned through last week, we learned that uh, the words that I speak, there's life and death in the power of the tongue. And the words that I speak, I'm not just speaking these words, but there's some very important elements in my life. And this is why the Word of God says, blessed is the eyes that see and the ears that hear and perceive the mysteries of God. In other words, when I take in the Word of God, and I hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to me, it should renew my mind. And I want to think upon those things and not just think upon those things. I want to also put myself in a position to hear what God is saying to me. I want to hear spiritual things. I want to make sure that the music that I'm listening to is, is elevating and to the praise and the worship of God. I want to do whatever I possibly can to be around godly conversation that will cause my life to be made the better, not the worse. Why? Because what we've learned in last session is whatever you hear, make no mistake about it, whatever you speak, it goes into your heart. 
or it goes into Proverbs on another account, calls it your belly. And you've got to digest what you talk about. Whoever you're talking with, whatever conversation is going on, there is no such thing as an idle word. Say, I'm, I'm going to say this again. There is no such thing as words that's being spoken that mean nothing. The moment they hit the atmosphere, they are a container that is full of power. That's why it says life and death is in the power of the tongue. Not just that the tongue itself, the little element, is powerful, but what it produces is powerful. Because what it produces is words. And when words hit the atmosphere, they actually explode. They explode. Now watch this. You've got to understand life and death is in the power of the tongue. And the words we hear, the words we speak, we must digest. I must digest those words. As a matter of fact, this is so powerful and, and so important that we would understand. God literally said that we will give an account for every idle word spoken. Amen. We won't give an, uh, an account for all the words in the atmosphere. I won't have to give an account for words that someone speaks to me, but I will give an account for every word I speak into the atmosphere. I, I want to say this again because sometimes we make things too personal and it's about the kingdom. God says, as a child of the kingdom of God, I am going to give an account for every word I put into the atmosphere. And the reason I'm going to give an account for every word that I put into the atmosphere, because I ought to speak the word of faith. Amen. And the words that I speak, Jesus said, the words that I speak are life. And so therefore, I should be wanting to bring life to this world, not death. And so I've, I've got to understand that I've got to guard my eye gates, my ear gates, and my mouth gates. My eye gates, my ear gates, and my mouth gates. Why? Because every word that I speak, every word that I endorse, that I allow to come into the gateways of my ears, I've got to digest. Now, I want to just say this before I move on. If you're dealing with a physical issue, uh, uh, maybe you, you're, you're a cancer victim uh, at one time and, and you recovered from it or you battling it right now or whatever you're going through, you've got to not just be careful for what you speak. You want to speak healing to your body, but you got to be very careful for who you allow to speak into your life. I wouldn't dare have a doctor that is negative and all he wants to do is quote you the negative statistics about the, 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 the victory of cancer. I want a doctor that can talk about how we beat this thing and talk about a team that he know and, and where we go. Because why? you got to digest what he's telling you. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want to be around people that are talking success in your life, not defeat in your life. Get, get, get away from people who are, who, and when I say away from them, I, I don't necessarily mean physically, because sometimes they could be your own relatives, so you can't just abandon them. But what I'm saying is alienate yourself from negative conversation. Do the best you can not to allow that stuff to, to enter into the gateways of your ears and eyes. Are you with me? Amen. We've got to come to a place in our life that, that we're pursuing life. And that has a whole lot to do with the words in which we speak. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Key statement. When my heart is right towards God, he will obligate to orchestrate circumstances and the events and situations of my life to bring me into the knowledge of the things I need to know and the people I need to know that are critical for the fulfillment of the purpose of my destiny concerning my life. God will orchestrate situations and circumstances where my heart is right towards him. Let's talk a little bit about that. We want to look at it from a different perspective. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So I must understand this heart is a very, very important thing. This heart is a very, very important thing. So I must understand when my heart is right towards God, well, what does that look like? That looks like when I'm hearing the right things and I'm saying the right things. Because as I thinketh in my heart, so am I. So now I understand when I've got a a regular digestive system. When, I've, when I'm digesting the word of God, when, I've got, when I'm operating with a spiritual diet and I'm digesting spiritually, then I will overcome those things in the world naturally. That's why he says, greater is he that's within thee than he that's in the world. But what does he mean? He didn't mean Jesus on the inside of me. Watch this. Jesus is not on the inside of me. Jesus is in heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. The Holy Spirit is aboding within me. 
Are you with me? And, and what did the Holy Spirit come to bring life to? The Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, the Word was with God, all things that was made was made by Him, and was not anything made that was made without Him. Now, the key here is not just what was made, but it's the Word that has power over what was made. So your situations and your circumstances are things that are made up. They have been orchestrated in the earth realm. So God says, when I take the word, when I digest the word of God, I begin to renew my mind. And I begin to think upon the things of God. And we're going to get to that today. I said, I must develop my mind spiritually and maintain the will to succeed. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. I won't go over these verses for the sake of time but I do want to reiterate the points. I must develop my mind spiritually and maintain the will to succeed. There's two things involved here. One, your conditioning, as we mentioned early in our introduction. I've got to condition my mind. That means I've got to, I, I, I've got to make my mind do exercises. Exercises is what I do in devotion. That's my prayer life. That's the re reading of the word of God. You cannot let just random thoughts just run through your mind and fear molest your mind. You have got to condition yourself. You've got to work out mentally. Ah, that would, I didn't get a lot of encouragement there. You've got to work out mentally. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, not only must I develop my mind spiritually, I must be willing to maintain my will. See, the will is a very, very important thing. We're going to deal with that. The will is what you choose to do. And God will never override my will, your will, or any human being in the earth realm. The moment God allowed us to come to the earth as spirits, he even gave us the will to accept Jesus Christ, to be on the side of the kingdom of light or the side of darkness. He gave us that will. He never tampered with it. Amen? We said point number two, we, must, we are only limited by what we believe God can do through us. I limit my life when I limit what I understand God can do. And not only what he can do, but how he will do it. And your mind is a vital element. God didn't just save your soul, but one of his greatest desires, I said, he taught 123 times to every one time how to renew our minds and live versus how to get saved. Because he knew once I got saved, I would be saved. Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthened me. That's the anointing. That's the mind of Christ. Say, I have the mind of Christ. See, you have the mind of Christ. The word of God actually commanded us, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. So when I have the mind of Christ, I speak what Christ said. I act the way Christ would have me act. Why? Because I want to think upon those things. We said point number three, successful people continuously work to improve their self-image. Successful people. How many successful people I have? Amen. The rest of you that didn't raise your hand, you are successful. You just didn't know it yet. <laughs> successful people. Well, we've got to continuously, not just every now and then, not just when it's convenient, not when things are going well, but I've got to continue to work on my self-image. Now, I won't develop the proper self-image of who I am if I keep listening to what the world has to say. I must read the Word of God and find out what the Word of God has to say about me. The word of God really becomes my mirror, James says, it, the book of James. It becomes my mirror. So watch this. The mirror does not reflect what's on the outside. But this is, this is what I call a reverse reflection. In other words, I begin to look like what it looks like. Amen. The whole objective is that I begin to look like what it says that I am. We also went on and we looked at Philippians 3, 13 through 16 concerning that. And then finally, we said successful people do the following. They learn how to stand up under stress. And we're going to talk about this today. They learn how to stand up under stress. They learn how to turn crisis into opportunity. They develop skills to handle frustration. They learn the art of communication. They learn how to talk to people. Hallelujah. And then we said point four. They learn to develop a keen sense of understanding. They learn to develop a keen sense of understanding, Proverbs 3, 4 through 6. They learn to place things into proper perspective. They put things into proper perspective. B, they use developed communication or develop uh, communication skills that help them to eliminate confusion in their life. I learn how to communicate effectively. I learn how to become a good listener. 
so that I can avoid confusion in my life. We don't have time for confusion in our lives, amen? They make an effort to validate their understanding of things. I don't just assume that things are the way that I think they are, the way I think they should be. But I develop some understanding to understand why they are the way they are. They are humble people. They never assume that they're in complete understanding of anything. I've got to stay humble. I've got to humble my disposition so that I can grow and reach a place of understanding that is necessary to the growth and development of my life. I don't want to assume that I know everything because I don't. I've got to grow. I've got to continue uh, to study. I've got to continue to listen to people. I believe everyone has something to say. It's our responsibility to decipher what they're saying if it lines up with the Word of God. Today, I would like to uh, introduce to you uh, part two of our lesson concerning our minds, the mental readiness for success. Part two. Turn with me, if you would, to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. And as I said in our last session that we would get to, how do I renew my mind, man, pastor? How do I, how do I become mentally strong so that all the things I just mentioned, I do not succumb to, but I overcome. I overcome frustration. I overcome confusion. I overcome weaknesses and fallacies. Are you in Romans chapter 12, verse 1? I want to start off by saying this morning, as we enter into uh, the mental complex, we're going to talk about the mental complex. And I've got to understand what the mental complex of who I am. Uh, I have a degree in biblical psychology. Uh, and I, psychology is simply the study of the mind. It's not a negative thing. It's not a bad thing. And there are individuals, secular psychologists, and, and they study the science of the mind as well. But you need to understand where everything originated from. You need to understand that God is the maker and the creator of all things. And so to really understand my mind, I cannot just understand my mind from the standpoint of science. I've got to understand Understand what created science to begin with. And if I can understand the heart of the creator, I can understand the purpose of the thing. And so when we start talking about the mental complex, I don't want you to think this is a psychology class because it's not. What we're going to actually be studying is the creator who is God, why he made the mind, and what's the purpose of it. See, if you don't know what the purpose of a thing is, you can't help but abuse it. Huh? Abuse is, is misuse. Abu we abuse things when we don't know what the use of them are, are designed for, what the purpose is. So when I understand what the purpose of the mind was, because this is, this is a real, real important question. Stop and think about it. God sent your perfect spirit out of heaven. And then God renewed your spirit. Born again is perfect. You'll never have to work on your spirit from the time you're born to the time you die. Amen. Once you get washed by the blood, there's nothing else to do to the spirit. Are you with me? Amen. This is why, this is why people can get saved, go back out into the world, not ever renew their minds in Christ, live a life of sin and defeat, die in a car accident, come to the altar in a box and go straight to heaven. Why? Because the contract to get to heaven was based upon the born-again spirit. It was the co-signer that got you in, not you. The co-signer was Jesus, and he signed it in his blood. Are, are you listening to me? So the quality of life or the success of the life that we live in Christ has to do with my mind, not with my spirit. Huh? So the success that I'm going to live as a believer it's based upon my mindset. It's not based upon my spirit set. The Holy Ghost got that set. Are you with me? Okay. So we're going to talk today about, we'll get, we'll get as far as we can. We'll talk about the success within the mental complex. We'll talk a little bit about the mind. We're going to use some, some terms that you're familiar with, but we're going to bring uh, the creator's heart into play with these elements that we will enhance our understanding to a greater degree. Uh, 
When we talk about your mind, your mind is really like a complex. I want to use it this way. Your mind is kind of like an apartment building. Different apartments, different components within the building, but it's all the same building. All rest upon the same foundation. But there's different compartments. This is why people, when they have mental illness, for the most part, certain compartments are not communicating with the foundation. Are you with me? And that's how they give them diagnosis and so forth. But what we're going to look at is how these compartments of the mind was originally intended by God, the creator, how he would really intend it for us to operate in them. So we'll know what to do with the words that these compartments get. And so we can process them properly. And it's extremely important to my success. Let's take a look at some scripture because everything we say is based upon the word of God. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 reads this way. And I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, this is Paul speaking, that you present your bodies, your complex, your mind, your soul, your body, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. We'll deal with this a little while later, but just in that, that, that statement, he says, as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. He actually, in that statement alone, addressed the tri triune of man. He, he addressed the holiness because that's what my spirit is. You see that? The sacrifice is what I'm, I'm going to tell my body what to do and what not to do. And my service is what I, I utilize with my mind. You are a spirit. You have a mind and you live in a body. Be not, listen to this now, be not conformed to this world. How do I overcome the world? When he says be not conformed to this world, he's actually not just talking about acting like the world or sinners act like, but what he's really talking about, this, this, this uh, 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 transformation, putting me into a state of rule. It was singing a song, which he did an awesome job on the worship team, was talking about he rules and reigns. Well, we should rule and reign with him. The word of God says we've been actually made to sit together with Christ Jesus on high. Now listen to this. He says, be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed. Be what? Transformed. Well, how am I transformed? By the what? Renewing of your mind. Not the renewing of your spirit. It's born again already. The renewing of your mind. That you might prove. That who might prove? Say I. Make it personal. That who might prove? I. In other words, you can't prove it for Chris, and Chris can't prove it for you. Are you with me? You must prove it for yourself. There are certain things that, that you must do for yourself. You know, uh, I thank God for the opportunity to counsel believers and to work with them concerning the word. But, you know, we have this prayer petition class, and, and what I'm trying to get, get them to understand, at the end of the day, we have, we have an array of things that we're doing as we petition the class. But at the end of the day, it's all about you. That what you would prove, and, and, and at the end of the day, it's how I come back to, to a tethered position in my life. To understand why God created me and why God put me here so that I would have the same mind that he would have so communication could flow. Now watch this. For I say, oh, well, let's go back for a moment. That I might renew my mind, that I might prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. God has a will for your life. You're not, you're not sent here by accident. God would not have allowed, it's against the architectural plan of God to allow you to come to earth and not fulfill your purpose. Amen. You, you, I'm going to tell you, uh, the grace and the mercy of God, thank you, Lord. The grace and the mercy of God is so awesome. The devil, he is nothing but the author of confusion. He tries to confuse everything. You know, he just really, really tries to confuse everything. And uh, uh, when you get to heaven, a lot of think, people think this is how they think. When I get to heaven, uh, I better make sure that I'm uh, making amends with sister so-and-so, and, -so and I, I better fix this, and, you know, I really need to quit this, and I, I really need to quit smoking, and I, I need to quit all this. Let me tell you something. When you get to heaven, that won't be on the agenda. First of all, you can't buy a pack of Newports in heaven anyway, so I mean. Amen. Huh? Ain't no Cavassier in heaven, so, we, you know, it ain't like. Oh, did I say something? Huh? 
Okay, so, so that, that's not an issue. You know what? You will give an account for. You know it's going to be on the table of conversation. Did you fulfill the will and purpose for why you were sent there? Now, now you got to understand, that other stuff, the reason you get convicted about it is because it will alter your mind. See, see, it it, it keeps you from keeping your mind on what you need to keep your mind on. See, it's not that I can't smoke weed. I don't want to smoke weed. It alters my mind. Well, you know, you know, Pastor Herb is good, you know. (laughs) The Lord put it here. He wouldn't have put it here if he didn't. Well, he put poppy seeds here too, but that don't mean you need to be injecting heroin. Amen. Huh? See, he gave me a mind to, to rule my own soul well so I know what is good and what's not good and what is for appropriate use and what's not for appropriate use. Yeah. Thank God for cocaine, which is in Novocaine. Thank God that I can get some of that when he starts drilling in the back of my mouth. But I don't need to leave the dentist and ask him for a package. You know, I mean, come on. Huh? <laughs> Let's come on back. Let's come on back. <laughs> for I say, isn't that ironic? He says, now I say. So the first thing what he's pointing out here, I'll begin to feed my mind. And I'm going to feed my mind about what Paul is saying here. The words in which we say. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. See, there it is. It's not that I can't do this stuff, but I need to stay sober. Huh? Amen. Amen. I get a call late at night and, you know, uh, somebody ill in the hospital or dying, been a tragic car accident, and they call me. You know, I need to be sober. I got responsibilities. Uh, you know, I need to be accountable. Uh, are you listening to me? According as God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. So here, this is really interesting. If you say that you have faith, James says, if a man say that he has faith, I tell you, I'll show you my works by my faith. In other words, if I have faith, then that means I have a sober mind which develops my faith. I cannot have faith with a drunk mind. Ah, See, see, I've got to have a sober mind. I've got to be in control of my mind in order to work faith. I've got to have the same mind that's in me that's in Christ Jesus in order to put my faith to work. Don't tell me you got faith. That's why you can curse somebody out or act ugly and say that you're a believer. See, it's not a spiritual issue. It's a mental issue. Oh, Lord. See, y'all never heard that. We like to blame everything on our spirit. No, no, you did that. The devil didn't make you do it. See, see that, that's where we jump off and you know, the devil made me do it, and they got me upset. No, your mind, your mind, your mind, your mind, your mind, your mind. Old people, the older folk back from south for the most part, had a saying. And my grandmother used to say, Now, I'm getting ready to go. Miss Louise going to be here. She going to be watching y'all. Y'all better mind. In other words, what my grandmother was literally saying, you go park your mind and listen to Miss Louise. You mind her. See, we need to come to a place that if I'm going to operate in faith, I've got to park my old mind, and I've got to transform my new mind, and I've got to mind Christ. Oh, Lord Jesus, I've got to mind Christ. I need to park my old mind. Oh, Pastor, you act like somebody need to lose it. That's it. You need to lose it. Lose it. Pray. 
Put it on your prayer petition, Lord. Today I declare I want to lose my mind. And Holy Ghost, if you would hide it to make sure I never find it again. 